Here are the best and worst performing months for stocks, shares, and equities over the past 50 years. Everyone has a season they really love or secretly hate. You might love garish costumes at Halloween, hate family gatherings at Christmas, or have a strange obsession over changing leaves in fall, or autumn for all you Europeans. Our data shows that holidays, tax years, and the weather, among other things, all affect how and when we invest in the stock market. For example, the dollar typically soars in January, the S&P 500 loves the beginning of spring, the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc tend to hold their own during the summer, and there's one month when pretty much everything does badly. Keep watching to find out. And if you want to see some of the other films we make here at Capital.com, like our recent debate on the future of the Euro with Nigel Farage, it's really an interesting watch, then click over here. But first, let's take a look at how changing seasons change the markets. When people ask me if I want the good news or the bad news first, these days, I always choose the bad. Optimism feels so pre-pandemic. So here's the bad news. We've studied seven of the world's biggest market indexes, and we've found one month where each one loses out. Can you guess which one? And no, it isn't January. Around the world, major stock market indexes all made an average loss in September. In fact, it's the only month of the year that the S&P 500 and NASDAQ fall. Our market analyst, Piero Chingari, gave us his take on what's going on in September. It's a risk averse month in which investors typically flee riskier assets like stocks, cyclical currencies, growth-linked commodities, and growth-sensitive sectors in favor of more traditional safe haven assets like gold, the Japanese yen, the Swiss franc. Retail sales drop in September, as do vehicle sales. And it's a bad month for something called the ISM Services PMI, which measures the health of private sector activity in the US. September is basically the time of year when consumers stop buying things they want but don't need. That's the bad news. So when do the equity markets pick up? Showers? Really? You didn't want to go to spring or the Easter Bunny? Showers or not, April is the big winner. All seven of the market indexes increased in April, and these six had their biggest gains across the year. The reason is partly psychological. Investors feel they've survived the cold winter months, and they're more confident after seeing the year's first quarterly reports. Where the green shoots sprout, the equity markets follow. We can't leave the equity markets before taking a good long look at the S&P 500, or US 500, as we've started calling it here at Capital.com. It's the Michael Jordan of the 90s, the Zinedine Zidane of the 2000s, or the Usain Bolt of the teens. The index that tracks the 500 biggest American firms is the best indicator of the health of the US economy. Here's its average performance across all 12 months of the year. First off, we can see a bounce in January, also known as the January effect. It could be caused by investors selling off loss-making shares for tax write-off reasons in December before getting back into the market in January. But some investors might also be transferring their cash into other currencies at the end of the year. It's used as an old tactic to underreport their balance sheets before returning to dollar-based companies in the new year. The US 500 also enjoys a late fall, again, autumn for you Europeans, and an early winter rally. Investors are back from holidays, ready to spend in the run up to Christmas, and the markets hold their own. There's an old market saying, sell in May and go away, but remember to come back when September ends. Our data shows that whoever came up with that, they might've been onto something. In 2022, the price of energy went a little crazy. If you're regular viewers of our channel, you'll know that we've covered the energy crisis a lot. Check out our recent film up here on Europe's energy crisis. So when this country invaded that country, the profits of these guys went through the roof. But how did the seasons change the price of commodities before war erupted in Europe? As the price of natural gas looms large in 2022, let's start there. And if you're thinking gas's biggest profits came in the winter months, well, you'd be wrong. 
Natural gas's best month was September, increasing by 11%, followed by October. As the school year starts, countries start refilling their gas supplies in preparation for the cold winter months. Refill months occur in spring and autumn, so that's when gas enjoys its biggest returns. Here's Piero again. There is the need to fill up gas reserves ahead of the cold month of the year, ahead of the cold season. Whereas during November, December, January, and then February, gas reserves are likely enough to fulfill the demand, unless there are major disruptions affecting weather. How about the commodity with the highest trading volume in the world? Crude oil. Spring is the most profitable season for oil, peaking in April, as refiners build up supplies for the travel season. The refining activity is particularly strong as the demand for crude rises in order to fill inventories ahead of the summer driving season in which there is a strong volumes of travels and transportations around the world. The more people fly or drive for their summer holidays, the more oil they use, and oil companies anticipate that. But from September onwards, people are more likely to sit at home than hop on a plane. Oil refineries take advantage of this and shut down for maintenance, pushing oil's returns down. Which means your summer holidays aren't just an excuse to make your friends jealous on Instagram, they have a direct impact on the price of commodities. It's one of the oldest taglines in the world. A diamond is forever. It made an awful lot of people drop their cash before they dropped down on one knee. And seasonal events like marriages and celebrations move the price of precious metals. Gold's best month was in January, with profits of 1.6%. The Chinese New Year falls in January, and it's also the start of the second wedding season in India. The two countries are the biggest global consumers of gold. And when they need more of it, its price increases. But what does that mean for the price of silver? A ripple in gold's price creates waves for silver, which also made its best results in January of 2.7%. Gold and silver both fall after the Indian wedding season, particularly in March and June, which means if you want to get married with a yellow or silver ring, it's worth buying off season. On the plus side, you might save some cash, but the downside is it gives your other half a few more months to change their mind. What about everything else, like consumer staples, consumer discretionaries, utilities, technology, or healthcare? To show you how the seasons have affected these sectors over the last 20 years, we're gonna make what looks like a heat map. And stick with us, hold on, it's a lot more fun than it sounds. First up, we're gonna put those sectors we mentioned on the left, and the months across the top. Now let's color it in. The darker the red, the bigger the losses. The darker the green, the bigger the gains. As always, let's take the bad news first. There were three months that ended up almost completely in the red. And those were January, February, and our old friend September, when diverse sectors across the board all struggled, including financials, consumer staples, and materials. Our data shows that those are the risk averse months, either before Q1 profits have been announced or when people are counting the costs of their summer holidays. And finally, let's end on a positive note. Let's take that good news. There are two quarters or seasons where the world is a brighter place for investors. And that's March to May and October to December. People obviously use consumer discretionaries and utilities and the healthcare sector in completely different ways. But spring and autumn are the months when our travel plans, quarterly reports, festivals, and just a load of other factors make consumers and investors more likely to spend rather than save. Which reminds me, I should probably start thinking about my Christmas shopping list. Remember that the price of stocks and shares will always vary depending on changing market conditions. And don't forget to subscribe to stay alerted to our regular chart analysis videos each week and other explainers on big financial topics of the day. Thanks for watching. See you next time.